Hey everyone, welcome back to BeamNG Drive, specifically the small island map where I think I said last time that I wanted to do some testing on uh, the new crossover that came into the game. Specifically, I want to see how good the average crossover is off-road, because this to me feels like a very average crossover. So today for us, I've spawned in two different variations of this crossover. Specifically, I've got the most basic version that there is, including the manual transmission. It's the 110 manual, and then the other one that I have is over here. It's the 160Q manual. This one, which you can see based on the performance specs, is all-wheel drive, and here's the performance for the other one. To me, these SUVs sort of fall in line with something like Infiniti's lineup, or maybe Lexus. Uh, so I'm very interested to try and see what they're like off-road. I've got the big roll and pitch over in the corner there so you can see uh, what it looks like as we go forward here. And we're here on the small island USA map once again. So let's go ahead, we'll start off with the front wheel drive car and let's see how good we can do. But of course, it needs to be put into off-road mode. Okay, so both of these are manual, which is going to give me a slight advantage when it comes to moving them around. Uh, I'm used to driving these cars now because uh, one of my previous videos, oh wow, that's not good. <laughs> Immediately we've damaged it. Maybe I'll take things a little bit easier because I don't want to reset this. I want to keep it going in terms of damage for as long as we can to see how far we can go in just a, an average crossover off-road. One thing to note is that uh, I have been driving these cars quite a bit just because I like this body style uh, quite a lot and I uh, even made a daily driver out of it, as you uh, could have seen in one of my previous videos, but here we go. There's a rock right there. Uh, you know what? I think we should kind of set a goal for ourselves. Maybe let's try to get up to the top of that mountain. With a front-wheel drive one, that's probably going to be a challenge. All-wheel drive, we might be able to do it, but yeah, these are just basic on-road SUVs, so overall it's going to be interesting. Now I have tested this just a little bit just to see what they're actually capable of and the all-wheel drive one is surprisingly capable especially with ESC set to uh, off-road mode although I don't exactly know what that does maybe just a bit more lenient on how high the RPM can get maybe a bit of slipping in there as well but it seems to work out pretty well. Now we haven't really encountered anything bad yet this is essentially just a dirt road nothing really going on that could cause too many issues for even a normal car i mean you could you could probably drive a smart car on this and you're going to be fine as long as you stay on the road uh, but this is an suv so i think we need to start to take it on uh, some more dangerous trails there are definitely some rocks on some of these that i think would be interesting for us to uh, attempt to tackle so i'm noticing something immediately with this version of it it is very much down on power uh, now, it is the most basic one, and I guess that makes sense for it to be the least powerful, but my goodness, it feels slow. Uh, I'm used to some very powerful uh, versions of this car. So, let's take this kind of narrow dirt road and just kind of see what it'll do. I know there are some rocks on here. I mean, we're kind of running into them already. I'll try to be sensible, try to keep it uh, slow and, and neat, but you never know. It's easy to slide off a cliff in this game, especially when we're getting up to this kind of height. Oh, boy. So we have the option of rocks or more rocks. And I'm thinking we just kind of stick to the option we're currently going for. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so our ground clearance is actually helpful. Uh, we haven't hit the, the bumper on anything too significant yet. Going downhill is a lot easier than going up. We just have to make sure that our brakes last through this. Okay, this big dip is probably going to cause us some issues. That rock there is quite high. Okay, a bit of a knock on the bumper, and a bit of a knock on the back as well, but we're fine. Okay, now I'm starting to see that uh, we may have a few problems here, specifically going downhill on this section. Okay, this is going to get beat up, most likely. Oh, not so bad. Oh, never mind, I'm hearing things getting clanked around in there. Okay, something just broke. <laughs> Well, we're only hurting the bumper, so no big deal there. I think we're fine. That was uh, not too bad. So I haven't mentioned this yet, but something that I want to do as well during this little adventure... Oh, did I pop one of the tires? Because the steering is definitely bent after that. Yeah, no, if you if you look at it, it's dead on. The um, One of the wheels is turned slightly, and it definitely should not be, considering the other one is relatively straight. Anyway, we'll continue on. Uh, so what I was saying before is I want to take the Enduro Drome with these vehicles as well and see how long they last. 
Uh, we're going to do this one, the front wheel drive one, and we'll do the other one as well on the Endurodrome before the end of this video. Okay, so we haven't taken any significant challenges yet. So far it's been pretty easy and I basically just drove around the hill. Uh, however, I do see a road over there that could potentially uh, put this thing to the test. Um, so far, not been bad though. <laughs> pretty easy. Just a couple of knocks on the bumper and we're, we're still moving forwards. However, I'm thinking as we get to some of the uphill rock sections, being front wheel drive, we're going to struggle a little bit. Okay, so pulling hard to the right is something that we're doing, but I really want to try and pull this thing to the left. Are we going to be able to make it over this significant rock obstacle? Uh, not with this much wheel spin, I'll tell you that. Okay, something just flew off. That was a hubcap. Not like we really need that anyways. But I think this might be the limit of this. Uh, we're not going to be able to do a normal, like, rock course, I would suspect. This one is pretty flat, but unfortunately our bent wheel and just the current state of the vehicle mean that it seems like we can't get up it. I'm thinking the all-wheel drive one might have a chance, but not with this one so far. Okay, after a couple more attempts and a couple more small knocks into the bumper, it seems like uh, that's probably a bit too hard of a route for us, so we're going to go around the long way. Uh, one thing that we are struggling with at this point is traction off-road. Uh, it, it seems to be wheel spinning significantly as I get up high in the RPM there, uh, which is a little bit dangerous. Okay, so we have found a way around that rocky section. It's uh, probably just a little bit too much for this vehicle, but I think uh, that one will be interesting to test with the off-road, more, or more off-road oriented all-wheel drive version of this. However, I'm noticing now that there is a bit of a hidden trail that I think we need to at least try. Okay, I'm going to drop down into first here. This looks like a challenge, but the goal is to get up to the peak of the mountain. Uh, it doesn't seem to be too much in the way of like large rocks and that. It's mostly just a grip test, as it's kind of sloped and... Okay, <laughs> immediately we're having issues. Okay, I'm keeping the RPM high, we're basically on the limiter, and we got nothing. Yikes. I didn't think it would be that much of a challenge, but grip is really getting us down here. Now, admittedly, I'm pushing a front-wheel drive crossover, one that kind of looks like a Tucson, to be honest, uh, a little bit further than the average person would. Um, <laughs> I've managed to make it over that, but I think we might have reach the highest point that this thing is going to get to. There hasn't been that much destruction overall, uh, surprisingly little in fact. Basically just the front bumper got messed up and we just ran out of grip because we couldn't go too far, but that's pretty much it for this one I think. Maybe it's time that we pulled out the all-wheel drive variant to see what that'll do, but first I'm just going to park this one down uh, over here right next to this little lookout section. Alright, it's time for the more powerful all-wheel drive variant to go, and I'm going to go ahead and put it into off-road mode as well. Uh, this one is again manual, uh, but being all-wheel drive and having quite a bit more power, I think we'll be able to do a little bit more with this one. Again, I'll try to avoid damaging it too much early on. I want to see if we can summit the, the cliff with this thing. Now personally, I think this is a little bit more of an interesting comparison. Uh, this all-wheel drive one is obviously made to be off-road. It's a little bit more luxurious, like the big moonroof on the top, uh, but it's probably going to have a better time overall. This isn't the full off-road spec by any means. There is one that is sort of made for this. There's even a gravel rallycross edition, but yeah, just in terms of driving so far, um, this one is fine for, for this kind of road. But we've seen this before. I think it's time that we attempted to get back to those rocks. Uh, we probably need to take on some heavier obstacles now that we have some heavier alt artillery underneath. Okay, immediately what I'm going to do is attempt to take the harder course that we took last time um, with the front wheel drive car. I want to see if we can just kind of get through some of those rocks and things that were causing issues to the other variant. And there we'll pass by our previous ride and move on to, well, maybe we'll try and summit immediately. Why not? Oh yeah, there are diesel variants of these, but I kind of felt that wasn't fair for the average crossover, at least not here in North America. Okay, immediately, all-wheel drive and more power is making a huge difference. That is way, way easier. However, uh, we are scraping quite a bit on the bottom, uh, just because we don't have the ground clearance, but my goodness. 
That was a pretty easy summit, all things considered. Not bad at all. And there you have it, the average crossover has made it to the top of Small Island USA. It's not exactly a big map, but uh, yeah, that was a little bit easier than I thought. Let's go ahead and try some of those rocky sections and see if we can't just make it through. Okay, there's a lot of scraping on the ground, but so far, no big issues with the all-wheel drive one. Oh wow, that was a three-wheel moment there. Okay, I'm seeing a path less traveled, and I'm very interested to try it. We're going to be going downhill on this one, uh, so be prepared for a bit of damage. I'll try to keep it uh, slow and easy here, but yeah, we're... Uh, we're in for it on this one, that's a bit of a drop. Okay, the only way we're actually going to avoid anything here is to go around the outside. Uh, okay. Our running boards are taking a bit of a beating. Now with this video, I'm not suggesting that you take your mom's RAV4 out off-roading, but I do think that it would be a little bit better than you might anticipate. Uh, if you're willing to just screw up the bodywork to get there, because that's the probably the main thing keeping people from trying any of this kind of stuff. Well, that wasn't too bad overall. A couple of scrapes on the running boards and a bit of a knock on the front end every single time I go through a big dip or something like that. <laughs> okay, again. Oh, that was a big hit right there. Okay, we've got a couple of rock obstacles that are not going to be able to be avoided, and I'm thinking we're probably not going to make it through... Oh, never mind, power wins the day. Apparently uh, getting a little bit close to being beached is the way to go with this one. I know these trees are solid, so I'm trying to avoid it. Oh, but we're kind of sliding down the hill at the same time. All right, well, that wasn't too bad, managed to make it through. I actually did fall down the hill, and I did manage to come back without any much in terms of trouble either. Uh, so overall, the destruction, pretty minimal. The driving, pretty decent. Oh, wait, what is this? Okay, it looks like we're going on the reverse side of that rock formation, or something similar. Uh, this is not going to be easy. Let me see if I can't just go up on the right side. Oh, so far, oh. Hey, we made it through with just a bit of knocking on the bodywork. But hey, that wasn't, oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say that wasn't too bad, and then the entire panel there just popped off. All right, well, there's the damage. That's pretty much it on this one. Uh, the all-wheel drive version of the vehicle, as we have found out, is significantly better off-road. However, I think it's time that I took them both to the Endurodrome, and then we saw uh, which one can do the most laps. That, I think that'd be pretty interesting as well. And this one's got a lot more power, so it's just going to be faster, which is actually not a good thing on the Endurodrome. Um, but we're going to be able to see some, some destruction as well, so I've been looking forward to this. Okay, so I've just spawned the same two cars again, uh, but this time I think what I'm going to do is put them into uh, comfort mode, maybe? We'll see if that makes any difference. Although, slight spoiler warning, I do have a vehicle that can traverse this map uh, without getting any damage at all, basically infinitely, and I'll show you that at the end of this, um, but it's very, very stiff on the suspension. I kind of cracked the code of the Endurodrome without really meaning to. Okay, let's go ahead and let's try the front-wheel drive version of this car. Uh, let's see if we can't just make it around the track a few times with it. And as per the normal rules for this, I'm following fail race guidelines. Basically, drive it fast, but not all out. Uh, I'm going to try to give it what it's got, but I'm not going to just be on the, the throttle the whole time. I do want to keep it alive for at least one lap, but after that, all holds are off and we can just kind of do whatever. So immediately off of the jumps, we have already bottomed out at least once and also broken the back fender a little bit. Uh, this one was the one that kind of broke its steering a little bit on the uh, on the last run that we were doing, but I mean, <laughs> we can hope for the best here. It's getting bounced around quite a bit. And now I don't really see a lot of these sections here challenging it too much, at least in its current state. Being bounced around is one thing, but being thrown off of a jump or into some rocks is a whole other thing. And I think that's where it's gonna really uh, get destroyed. I'm always just grateful for when I can actually drive the car around the track and it's easy, uh, because as soon as we start to break steering bits, it's going to be incredibly tough to keep it still and to keep it straight as well. So far, though, it seems to be only bodywork that's taking a beating. However, I think that's about to change as we go through here. Oh, that was rough. And it rolled, but it rolled all the way over. Hey, not looking too bad. Okay, the next obstacle is unrelenting as uh, immediately we hit something else right after hitting that tough spot. 
And I think the steering is a little screwed because we are moving really quite far to the left, but this is until destruction here, so let's see what we can do with it. I really want to see this, uh, this thing just like die to some catastrophic failure. It'd be great if the engine exploded or something instead of just dying of heat death over time. But thankfully that's where the power of editing comes in, and if there happens to be a very long death, I can cut out all this stuff in between. But here we go, let's take off on the big jump. Let's see if I can't just do something good with this. Uh, hopefully, let's go up into third. Ooh, ooh, that was a big hit. You need about 100 Ks an hour to pass that properly and, well, we didn't have it. Okay, the front steering is absolutely gone and I think that last hit collapsed the suspension on the left side. Uh, so this next lap is going to be a challenging one. Uh, what I'm going to do as well is if the car is not capable of going over 20 kilometers an hour, I'm going to count it out, and the same thing uh, if it's uh, not able to turn a corner by natural means, then I'm going to count it out as well, and we'll say that's good enough. Okay, the ESC is actually kind of screwing us, so I think I might end up turning it off partway through here, just because it's cutting power, because it's detecting a loss in traction, as you would kind of suspect from an ESC of this kind. You can see the brakes are coming on, but... I'm not doing that. Okay, just to keep things consistent, for the second lap on both of them, I'm going to turn off the ESC, uh, but I'll keep it on comfort for both areas. But you can see we can get up to a lot more power without that thing on. Okay, the back bumper is uh, attempting to leave us. Okay, nothing too dramatic in that section, a bit of a bump on the outside, but nothing terrible. It seems like we're just kind of driving it down slowly. No huge issues in terms of uh, drivability or engine problems, the radiator's still fine, surprisingly so for our second lap. But as I said, I'm going to try and get this one like really moving now, so I'm hopeful that, uh, that we can start to break some stuff here. And the mud pit is coming up, but after that, you know, things are gonna get hairy in the rocks, and then the rocks immediately after. Three obstacles in a row that really test the vehicle. I think that might have been done on purpose, but here we go. Ooh, that was actually pretty clean. Not too bad at all. I'm thinking, though, that this next section, as we start to lose speed, is not going to be too good for us. And... <laughs> that was a big hit. Uh, we're kind of losing the entire front valence right now. It's not like we really needed that anyways. Okay, it's struggling for power in second gear, but it's mostly because the front wheels are fighting each other. And I'm interested to see... I think the front wheel drive one is probably going to last longer. Like, that, the one that we're driving now is going to last the longest. Just because the other one is so much faster, it's going to be taking jumps and bumps a lot quicker than the uh, than this one is, so that might be interesting to, to kind of see that dynamic. Okay, coming up to the big jump once again, and this time we actually have a little bit more speed than last time, but it's not going to be enough. Oh, that was a bounce, and wow, a really clean bounce of that. Nice and easy. Okay, our back bumper is literally holding on by a thread. Uh, it's just holding on by the plastic that goes around the wheel well to make this thing look like it's supposed to be off-road, but in this case it's mostly just dragging behind, causing us just a ever so slight slowdown, but there it goes, it caught on something else. Okay, the under tray is currently falling out. That's not something I would have expected to lose, but it's interesting nonetheless. Oh wait, no, that's probably the front bumper, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Say goodbye. Alright, we're actually gonna finish a second lap here. I almost hit the other car. I maybe should move that out of the way. <laughs> but my goodness, we're having some issues staying on the track. Oh yeah, I probably should say this, but don't worry, I'm not gonna make this a regular thing driving on the Endurodrome. I'm just interested in it right now, so that's why I'm doing it. But so far, I mean, it's kinda not been that eventful. Nothing really bad has been happening yet. This thing is messed up, but it's not the end of the world. The steering is screwed up, and that's pretty much the only main issue. Everything else is fine. Heck, I probably should have put it, like, with a quarter fuel or something, because we may end up running out of fuel before the rest of it dies. <laughs> but let's see. Over the rocks again coming up, and we might be able to destroy it a little bit more. Ooh, that was rough. But, hey, we still managed to live. Not bad at all. Again, the steering is really screwed, but... Oh, that was a rock section I didn't mean to hit. And... <laughs> Always unforgiving, goodness. Unfortunately, I am going to have to roll this over, uh, so I'm going to try to do it cleanly. And by cleanly, I guess I mean not cleanly, because I'm about to rip off a door. Yeah, I know, I really should have grabbed a hard point instead of something that could be taken off, but 
my mistake there. Either way, we're looking at a bit more damage right now. Uh, coming up to the bounciest section in the map. And then again, over the jump. Okay, that did not go very well at all. Um, <laughs> managed to roll it quite significantly. We are a little bit flatter than we were before. You can tell the roof line is a little bit shrunk, but <laughs> overall we're still moving. At least a little bit. Okay, I'm starting to notice that the back wheel is uh, very much displaced, and that's not helping with our cause of trying to go quickly here. <laughs> okay, and our exhaust is getting beaten and battered as well. The front grill is right here. It looks like we're going to end up eating it. Uh, but okay, that's not too bad for us. We'll be able to avoid that part next time, I guess. Uh, but again, let's avoid hitting the other car. <laughs> uh, I think what I'm going to do is leave this one on the track somewhere to make it more difficult for the other one. Well, we're on lap 3, and I'm kind of wondering if I should just cap it at 4 and say that's good enough, because it has had a mighty victory by itself just being able to do this. I'm going to be surprised if we can make the same kind of progress with the all-wheel drive version. Okay, a bit of another roll off of that, but we seem to be fine. Nothing really going wrong here. I'm going to try to roll it over again using uh, a bit more concrete of a method. Perhaps the center of the roof. <laughs> there we go. Okay, coming up to the jump again. This is probably the average speed we've been doing for it, but ooh, that's rough. Surprisingly, again... We've managed to make it out of that without many issues. <laughs> this thing will not stop. Although the hatch is open now, so I guess that's different. Yeah, I don't know how Fail Race does it. I guess he just picks cars that are very specifically uh, going to break a little bit earlier than these ones. But a lot of these beam cars apparently are quite durable. Because uh, this is not the only one I've tested around the track just for my own uh, fun. And it, <laughs> at this point, I think I'm going to call it. That was... Uh, that was a pretty interesting run. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, no engine damage. Uh, suspension damage is our only issue. We have no hubcaps left, and the body looks pretty darn beat. It rolled over quite a few times, but that door issue is <laughs> totally caused by me. Everything else, though, is looking okay. <laughs> I mean, if you ignore the very obvious damage to the front end. All right, well, I guess we're about to answer the question. Can an all-wheel drive version of it last as long Especially now that it's going to be a comfort preset at the first lap. I'm interested to see if it's going to look any worse than that at the end of this. Okay, setting off immediately, this one is much faster. It's not killer uh, in terms of speed. Like, there is a 400 uh, horsepower version of this thing, which is absolutely nuts. There's actually a diesel 400 horsepower version. Uh, but you can see, we're kind of getting destroyed immediately off of some of the bumps, and already we have the same damage as we did before with the front-wheel drive version. But, like I said last time, this is much faster, and speed is not a good thing on this track most of the time. Uh, it basically just means we're going to be hitting these bumps harder, especially stuff like the jump, uh, where our landings will be harder. Although they might be better, because we might be able to clear it. Okay, coming up to our first mud pit of the day with this all-wheel drive version. Seemingly, oh that was bouncy, but seemingly pretty decent. No issues there at all. No bent steering yet either. Are we going to be able to clear? Oh, easy. And this other version of it as well. Yeah, no problem there. Just a bit of a hit on the ground. And a slightly bent up front end, but... So far, not too bad. We're kind of just making our own ground clearance at this point by bending all the plastic bits on the front and the back out of the way. If you take those off, you have a pretty good off-roading shell here, apparently. Okay, all of that, and we're still driving straight. Uh, I consider that to be a win in itself. But so far, we haven't hit the big jump yet, and that's kind of just the destroyer of all steering components. Let's give it a go here, though. I'm going to probably be able to crease that 100km limit that we need to jump over it. Oh yeah, there we are. Let's see it, and oh, nice and not that smooth, but reasonably smooth all the same. Okay, I'm very surprised still that nothing is really that wrong with this. I also really like how the uh, bumpers and stuff are still on the track in the way as we continue on. Uh, but so far, <laughs> okay, that was a bit of a hit. So far, so good. And with one lap down, I'm going to go ahead and change the ESC over to... Uh, just being off. So theoretically all this means is that we're going to be breaking traction a little bit more uh, because currently we're not having the same issues with steering as we were at the end of the first lap with that other car. However, 
uh, we are still bouncing around quite a bit. Okay, as you would suspect, things are moving quite a bit faster than they were previously. I'm able to do a pretty consistent 70 kilometers an hour on this track, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the sections. But <laughs> overall, like, I'm flying here and not having any issues at all. Apparently these new vehicles are built quite tough. All right, here we go again through the dangerous zone, though. Oh, that was a hit. And, I mean, we managed to live through it, so that's probably a bonus. Into the sand a little bit, though. That's not quite what I had anticipated. Oh, there goes the whole front end. Well, okay, what's going on now? Are we completely... Oh, wow. Hold up. Oh, no. <laughs> Looks like this might be a little worse for wear. Uh, that might have actually ended the run, because I can no longer steer... <laughs> and it just killed itself with its own speed. Without that front wheel being bent like that, uh, we could have been fine, although I might have just fixed it. Okay, apparently it's fully working again. Uh, Alright, I'll continue on and see if it jumps off its axis again, but apparently it's fine for now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was then. Um, maybe it just got wrapped around physics-wise, it's like glitch with the nodes or something like that, but we'll continue on anyway. I thought that was it, but... Apparently not. Okay, we're gonna hit the jump again at a cool 100 k's an hour, and... Oh, that took out our front bumper, which is actually a good thing. And our back bumper as well. Oh, apparently we're wearing our rear bumper like a hat now. Uh, keeping it off the ground, though, is a good thing. Apparently it's not gonna be taken out by the same section as the other one was. Although it's likely to be taken off soon. Just keeps getting bashed around here. Okay, that's lap two done, and only one big scare in the total of its run. Uh, the steering still works fine, other than that one issue that we had there for a bit. Uh, but overall, the all-wheel drive car is definitely more durable than uh, than I thought it was. Having power go to the rear wheels alone is enough to uh, to make it stronger, just because we're not so reliant on the front end. It doesn't have to power everything at this point. Although, again, that being said, I'm not sure what the bias is in terms of power to the front end and power to the rear with this. It's probably heavily geared towards the front. At least I would suspect so. Okay, so coming up to the rocks again. These are the most eventful parts of the track so far. Oh, yikes. Okay, at least we are going to have one rollover with this one. And I guess the perks of having a glass sunroof like that are you get a full shower of glass when you turn the car over. But overall, it seems like everything is still pretty normal here. Alright, coming up to the jump for a third time, I believe. Uh, let's see if we can't just do this one properly again. Okay, that was a pretty decent grind there, Tony Hawk. Oh my goodness, I'm an idiot. Well, I think I just screwed up the wheel again, uh, doing the same sort of thing that I did before, except this time I just hit a concrete barrier. I seriously think this thing could go on forever if I don't keep making that mistake. But weirdly enough, it is back again. <laughs> so strange that it's so easily twistable and then it'll come back. The steering is obviously screwed up now after that though, and I really think the suspension is starting to go too because we are just constantly bottoming out on every single jump. One more lap to go and we'll see what the damage looks like between these two. I really want to lose that back bumper as well, but if it hangs on till the end, then so be it. Oh, there it goes, rest in peace back bumper. Well, I kind of took that corner a bit hot and it ended up swinging out wide. Needless to say, uh, we're starting to lose steering components, and we definitely are looking pretty much exactly like the other destruction um, from the other car. Our roof is kind of crushed from the rollover, and our wheels are kind of messed up, although these are legit rims, so we're not going to end up with stealings at the end of this. Alright, over the rocks once more. Last time for today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what the heck? That was a heck of a roll and a corkscrew, and it landed on its feet. And again, the trunk is open. This seems to be a theme with these ones. Also, the back wheel is really bent. Goodness, that is significant camber there that we're not, uh, not really going for. That's some good positive camber. All right, coming up on the jump one last time for today. Let's see if we can't just run over it at a good speed. I'm having a hard time keeping it straight. Oh, that was rough. Okay, that wheel getting hit isn't that big a deal. And if anything, it's probably just going to straighten this out a little bit more. Well, we're coming up to pretty much the end, and we'll be able to compare the damage between these two, and I'll show you something that I made on stream that just so happens to be basically ridiculous on, around this map for some reason. Okay, so here's what we've got. 
Uh, basically, the front ends of both of these cars are quite similar. Uh, both of them went for a roll or two or three, and both of them lost their front valences as well as a lot of other components. This one is currently really bugged out for some reason. There's something kind of moving under there that probably shouldn't be. Uh, but overall, front ends looking pretty darn close. Interestingly, the back ends are also pretty similar. It seems like the back end here actually stayed alive for a while, but the other side got pretty bent in. Uh, this one, I don't know, this back wheel here seemed to break as well, and this one as well. Both of them lost the back bumper, and the back tailgate opened up as well. Although, I think overall that the all-wheel drive one sustained a lot more damage, probably due to a few small mistakes on my part, and a couple of just <laughs> bad, bad crashes. Well, what did we learn today? How good is the average crossover off-road? And I think the answer is surprisingly good uh, for something like this. Um, although this is BeamNG, it's not exactly realistic. These are not terrible off-road. It's just kind of interesting to see. I would never actually try and drive a crossover off-road in these kind of situations. I mean, the Enduro Drome isn't exactly off-road all of the time. A lot of it is pavement, but Small Island USA was pretty easily conquered by an all-wheel drive crossover. I don't know what to think about that. Okay, just for fun, I'm going to quickly show you something that was made on stream on my Twitch channel. Uh, the VOD is actually up there right now, but this is a car specifically made uh, to be real bad. It's a non-intercooled uh, turbo inline four that doesn't make much power, but this thing is really good in the Enduro Drome. Also, it only has two gears, um, but for some reason having super, super tough suspension, actually the toughest possible, uh, it is just a beast in this map. And I drove it around here with a caravan and had zero issues for several laps. So, I don't know, take what you will, but it seems like tough suspension in automation vehicles is the best way to go on this map. But when it comes to these SUVs, I think I've done them some justice. Let me know what you think of this kind of test in the comments. It's not very objective, it's 100% subjective, but it's just kind of fun to drive things in places where they're not really supposed to go. Either way though, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to keep making more of it. And I've got some more off-road stuff coming down the pipeline. Specifically next week, there's a bit of a bigger game coming out that I'm planning on covering, so I think it's going to be good. This channel is supported by viewers like you. We have Canadian Steel, Overlord, Dr. Ivo, That Rice Out Explorer, QT Bear, Terry Williams, The Most Random Person, Sick D Cars and Stuff, Boris Ramirez, Daniel, and Jacob. Thank you all for your support.